Okay, so Mike just gave you this really great talk about this tree, which is the white bark pine. And it's different from the ponderosa pine and the lodgepole by having five needles. It's in a group of pine trees called the five needle pines. And its closest relative is the bristlecone pine, which are some of the oldest living things on earth, over 5,000 years old. And these can also live very long times. And they live at very high elevations, and they produce these really yummy seeds. However, on a given year, you will hardly ever see a seed because 99% of all the cones are harvested by a symbiotic bird called Clark's Nutcrackers. And the Clark's Nutcrackers will harvest 99% of all of the cones and then they will bury the seeds and they will use those through the year. A typical bird will bury 10,000 seed caches and can remember the location of over half of those seed caches. Can you imagine burying 10,000 geocaches and coming back and being able to find half of them or even five of them? So bird brain is not a real misnomer. They actually have a different part of their brain and they are actually helping the tree because the ones that they do forget become planted and that's how they get spread around. Unfortunately, a disease came in from European relatives called the blister rust and the blister rust is heavily killing off all of the remaining brist, um, white bark pines. So that in this area that we're in, Okanagan County, it's one of the last strongholds of white bark pine. So there's a huge project where they're seeking cone collectors and now planters. And they're going to be replanting by collecting cones of the trees that are resistant to the blister rust. So these guys go through the campgrounds and whenever they find a tree that doesn't have the blister rust, they collect the cones from that. So if you're looking for a job climbing trees, the Okanagan National Forest might just be interested in talking to you and you might be able to help save these trees by collecting cones or helping plant them. Or you might even be interested because they're not just valuable to the Clark's Nutcracker and to themselves, but those caches are also used by a lot of other species. On, a, on some years they have found when grizzly bears don't have enough huckleberries, they will start seeking out those caches and, and early crops of the cones before the Clark's Nutcrackers get them. And then they can use that for a major source of food on a year when huckleberries aren't the best crop. So they're actually very important to grizzly bears as well. And probably anybody that's traveling in the wilderness would be happy to find these really good nuts. However, they aren't common. So we're going to look for more today. And here we go. Coach Cooley, let's head out there and find some. Here. This is what you're after, the core of these. They are good when they're fresh like that.